Thank you very much. So this talk will be a little bit about um, what we at Univention uh, and um, after a lot of conversations with many um, partners in the industry think what the major issues of cloud computing are today for customers and um, also how we can address these issues and how we can make the cloud business even more attractive for smaller software vendors which uh, do not have the which do not have found a good way into the cloud yet and also for smaller regional operating cloud service providers uh, i don't know if i'm allowed to say uh, for example, Swisscom is one of those, but they stated clearly that they concentrate on Switzerland in opposite to, for example, what Google or Microsoft or Amazon uh, are doing, uh, which try to uh, address the world globally. Some words to uh, Univention and to myself. I'm the founder and CEO of Univention. We are building an enterprise computing platform, a Linux distribution, in fact, if you want, which is not so much addressed at um, being an alternative to Unix, uh, what has been the history of SUSE and, and Red Hat, for example, but more um, uh, being a better alternative to the Microsoft server stack, that is, we provide uh, Active Directory services, we provide everything to manage your clients, to distribute software, and so on. And on top of this, uh, since uh, two and a half years, we built an app center where we have now more than uh, 70 enterprise applications which very well fit into this, uh, uh, this system and which integrate with the identity management system of this solution. It's called Univention Corporate Server. It's open source software. You can download it for free and use it for free in your organization if you like. So if you look at today's cloud services, and here's an example of uh, the uh, our choice of the more famous ones, these are all very awesome applications, aren't they? And we all uh, use at least some of them once in a while. Uh, that is one thing uh, which they have in common. The other thing is that they bundle a lot of things into one offering. In fact, if you buy or use one of these services, you use the software, you use the computing power, you use the, uh, the, the storage uh, facilities used by these cloud services, but you also uh, agree to a certain service level, you agree to a contract which is, um, which is done under a certain jur jurisdiction, like, for example, uh, American or Swiss jurisdiction or whatever you have. The point here is, you cannot choose. You can't choose to run Evernote in your own data center if you feel that would be a good, better idea. It's just impossible. Also, you can't uh, say, I like uh, Google Docs very well. Uh, LibreOffice is also quite good, but I like Google Docs, but I would like to run it in the Microsoft data center. That is simply not possible. So if you want to use one of these applications, you have to take it all or you can't take it. And the reason for this, of course, is that the software itself to provide this cloud service is simply not available. We see this in the Salesforce logo. They even sell it as a feature to us. The software is not available. But let's think about this a little bit. What does it mean the software is not available? The software is not available means you can't run it on premises. If you feel, oh, I'm fed up with all this cloud stuff, I want to do it in my own data center, it's not possible. You can't migrate from one cloud service provider to the other. So there's no choice, there's no competition. If you if you are engaged with one platform, if you have all your processes implemented in this one platform, it's very, very hard to migrate somewhere else. There is no choice. 
Also, you are losing control. You might lose the control what will happen with your data. And um, if you are in such a classic vendor lock-in situation, uh, what will follow is what we have seen quite often in the IT industry. Innovation will become much, much slower because uh, the service provider knows you can't leave. You simply can't leave. You are caught in that cloud. So, that's a sad situation, isn't it? You might say, okay, most cloud services offer me ways where I at least can download my data. And that's true. If you go to Google Docs, you can download uh, the files in different formats. But the data is not everything. The value is the data combined with the processes. And all these services offer you, for example, powerful scripting languages, and you can't migrate those. Um, if you know what happened uh, at the city of Munich when they tried to migrate from Microsoft Office to OpenOffice and now LibreOffice, the hard thing was not to migrate the data. That's, in fact, very easy. The hard thing was to migrate all the logic behind it, all the Visual Basic scripts to OpenOffice Basic or however it's called, I'm not quite sure. That, that took years. And that is really, and that for especially smaller customers makes it really impossible to migrate, for example, from Google Docs uh, to uh, Microsoft Office 365 or vice versa if you have implemented a lot of stuff in there. And they want us to implement a lot of stuff there. They offer us very powerful, nice tools where you can really do a lot with. So, these are, and that on the other hand is the nice thing, these are the major inhibitors of cloud computing. If we look at recent studies, we see number one still is security, is my data safe in the cloud, but it diminishes. There becomes more trust, and uh, we get more trust there. Um, but Already, the second issue is this issue. Do I lose control over data? Do I lose control over processes? And also number five, fear of login. I will tell you what number four and three are later. So in, in case you ask yourself why I omitted them here. So these are, these are recognized by enterprise customers and by corporate customers. Also, if we look at the future of cloud computing, um, study the same picture. Number one inhibitor is security. And then we see uh, login. Uh, interestingly, interestingly, interoperability uh, is not so much seen as an inhibitor anymore. And this is because of these powerful APIs and scripting languages and stuff we get, which makes it very easy to integrate these cloud services, but uh, which also um, increase the login effect uh, of, of these services. And here's the last one, same picture, security, then privacy, compliance, login, the next issue, and here are some more. Uh, Complexity, uh, cloud management, um, difficulty in integration is now here on, on uh, rank six. And here are number three and four. This is actually uh, cloud uh, connectivity. And I think this is uh, due to the fact that this uh, Tech Isle study has been done in the US, where you really have still poor connectivity in, in a lot of areas. I think. I think this is better in Switzerland and in many areas uh, of Europe it is better. So, obviously, the solution to this, the only solution to this is to select cloud services where the software is independently available of the cloud service. And I think more and more players in the industry and more and more 
uh, enterprise uh, customers, corporations do recognize this. And as a reason, we see, in fact, more and more cloud services where this is the case. Here, is, and here are a few examples, and they are quite proven, well-known applications uh, here. Most of them open source software, but not all. And um, yeah, these applications, you can get all of them somewhere in the cloud. They are powerful cloud services, in many cases from many different providers, so there's real competition. Uh, but you always can choose to take them, to bring them back home, to run them in, the, in your own private cloud, in your own data center. And this gives you a huge power and uh, many possibilities to better, many possibilities and a better position to talk with your vendors. This, in fact, is also because the software is available, a huge opportunity for smaller regional focused cloud service providers. Because these providers can't write Office 365 and compete with Microsoft. They can't write Google Docs or Evernote, but they can use this software and provide it in their data center. And if they do, they have a lot of benefits. They are local, they are trusted, they have the connection to the customer. As we have heard in the talk from the Swisscom guy in Switzerland, it's very important to have the cloud service in Switzerland under Swiss jurisdiction and not being a US uh, corporation. This is what these providers can provide. But they, they, yeah, they can provide security and trust. Of course, they all also have to, to take the technical measures needed for this, but uh, there are a lot of uh, smart guys out there and uh, many of them are able to do this. The hard thing is that they have to compete also in terms of integration of all these applications. They cannot concentrate, they, they cannot just offer hosted Microsoft Exchange and one ERP application or so, what we see a lot in the market. They really have to offer the whole thing. They have to offer the choice to the customer, uh, otherwise he will, otherwise there will always be something missing. And then the customer says, it is easier to go to Amazon. It is easier for me to go to Microsoft. And uh, then they can't conquer this, this huge opportunity. Also, going into the cloud is not a binary thing. Uh, as we all know, uh, organizations will have on-premises IT infrastructure for a, small, for a long time, and these local providers have to offer integration between uh, on-premise IT infrastructure and cloud services. And that's the challenge. The challenge is to offer this integrated stack of applications on the one hand and also to offer, um, to offer the, uh, the integration with the uh, on-premises IT, which is also quite hard for, for smaller providers. So, if we look at this picture, we have a bunch of software providers providing very good software, and we have a bunch of cloud service providers which all could provide each of those applications. But everyone has to integrate each application with his cloud management system, with his billing system, uh, with the customers on premises IT, and so on, and this makes, gives a huge complexity. So, and, the, and that's the idea behind the Open Cloud Alliance, in fact, is to have one open source platform, which, where, on the one hand, software vendors, and on the other hand, service providers, do have only to integrate once, which provides the identity management system for all applications, even if they 
run at different cloud service providers, even if some of them run in a private cloud on the customer side, which does, which keeps care of the billing, uh, and which provides other central services for all applications. And then everyone has to do only one integration here. So the platform for this is a modified version of our open source system, Univention Corporate Server, which, as I said, is available for download, and everyone is invited to just check it out. The applications, many of those applications are already available, already integrated. We have, I think, a little bit more than 70 applications. Here's a, here's a choice. We add, at the moment, about one application each week, and that is not we are adding them, the software vendors are adding them. The solution is in use at 2,500 organizations right now. Large vendors like Orange in France use it to uh, implement Open Exchange for 30 million users with this platform. So there's really, there's really coming pressure on it. So 60 is not true anymore. Sorry for that. This is uh, the web interface, uh, which you will see if you, if you check it out. There's also demo.univention.com, where you can go to the web interface and just see a limited version, just play around with it. With it. it won't allow you to install applications, therefore you have to download a and a virtual machine image or an ISO to install it. We, will, we are in the process of adding uh, Docker support, which hopefully will be finished within this month. Uh, as soon as this is ready, we will push all these applications into uh, the Docker registry so that you can pull them into your Docker environment if you want. And you will always get this integrated identity management with each of these applications. So I think this is, uh, this is a pretty nice and useful thing. So the stack, I think it's, it's quite clear. We started working on this together with IBM and Lenovo, but of course it's, uh, it's working with other vendors too. Uh, then we have OpenStack and Docker there as the cloud management platform. What we are doing, in fact, lives above the cloud management platform. We are, we are keeping care about the things living inside the Docker image or inside the virtual machine images. That, that is Univention Corporate Server. And on, on top of this, we have these enterprise apps which are, um, which are integrated uh, using a an, an single identity management based on OpenLDAP um, with Active Directory integration and a lot of other nifty things. This alone, uh, the freedom which customers can get out of such a system will not come true if the players providing services using such a system won't commit to a number of, uh, of basic principles. So we set up a charter for the Open Cloud Alliance. And uh, there, are, there are a number of rules in there. For example, while it is technically possible to migrate your stuff with such a solution from one cloud service provider to the other, the cloud service provider still could say, I won't let you do. So you, you, you could technically, but I won't expose the means to do this to you. you just see the web interface of your application. So then this freedom would go away. So the partners of the Open Cloud Alliance, those who will, uh, who will be able to put the logo on the web page uh, in the future, guarantee that they will not hinder migrations. They will support cl cross-cloud integration. So that you, in fact, can use the system with different applications on different, um, in, di in different clouds. They will also support integration with uh, non 
open Cloud Alliance off offerings. In fact, we are working on an Office 365 integration right now, and there's also a Google, Google integration, because our idea is we want to put freedom and choice in this game, and that, that cannot be that this kind of freedom choice opens a new jail where you can't use proprietary tools. Uh, we want to make this possible too. The choice has to be with the customer. So, software vendors uh, have free choice of license. We, as Univention, only do open source software. Every line of code we commit will be published on public servers. I think at least four hours after it is committed or so, but I'm, I'm not quite sure about that, but fairly early. Um, yeah, and it is, it is an open source uh, project governed by us, but uh, we, we don't rule uh, our partners which, uh, put, uh, which, which integrate with the system, which put software in the app center, uh, which uh, license they use. And it's not exclusive. Every software vendor, every cloud service provider who does this can still do other things. And I think that's, that's quite important too. So, at the moment, we are working with a very limited number of cloud service providers to get all the business processes behind this running, which I have to admit turned out to be much more complex than we thought uh, at the beginning, but we are very confident uh, that, that uh, we have solved most like 98% of those issues now, and uh, we will see the, we already, there, there are already, uh, I think, uh, two providers uh, using the systems. We will see uh, some more in July, maybe, maybe even in June. Um, and then uh, in the third quarter, we will start to work with a larger number of cloud service providers to scale this a little bit further. So if you want, is, is any one of you a software vendor or a cloud service provider? One. <laughs> ah, yeah, <laughs> we talked already. <laughs> so. Uh, we talked already, but otherwise I would have said uh, I'm very happy to talk with you and I'm very happy to, to continue this conversation. Um, okay, that's it. Do you have any questions? I'm sure there must be questions. even if it's late in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's one, yep. great. Um, one of your pic pictures looked like uh, a picture of an enterprise service bus. You know which one? Right, uh, The yeah. one with the green line in the middle. Um, I think both concepts are, are very catchy uh, and is interesting, but as we know, yes, this, that's the one, thanks. But as we know, the, the enter enterprise service bus didn't uh, really come to life. What makes you think that uh, the Open Cloud Alliance gets a better start or a, a longer lifetime? Um, two points. One thing, I'm not quite sure about your conclusion about the enterprise service bus. Moolsoft, for example, just got a hundred million dollars investment, so they are really successful. Um, but um, I know what you mean, and I think the point is that an enterprise service bus tries to solve a lot of problems with a lot of applications and a lot of APIs and um, our approach here is much more lightweight. We, in the first place, just 
keep care of identity management because this is this this is really a core issue and it's kind of solved. I mean, um, everyone or nearly everyone uses Active Directory in its organization. Some use our product and they have open LDAP, but most of the world still use Active Directory and all those applications integrate with this service. So there's one single point of identity administration in each organization. But if you look at how medium-sized or even s smaller organizations are using the cloud, they're back in the 80s. They have all these different services and, uh, and, 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 and there's no central identity management for them. So, and the point is that all these applications, or most of them, already provide means to integrate with an directory server, but there's just not the glue to make them integrate cross-cloud and every cloud service provider has to set up this environment new, reinvent the wheel new, has to, um, has, to pr has to write user management interfaces and all this stuff. And, it's, and that is not that much work. I mean, we are also a small company, we are 50 people, we, we know that, <laughs> that we can't write an enterprise service bus, but we can keep care of these very pressing small problems, and that, that is what we are trying to do there. 